church. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Me too. Praise the Lord. Today, Membership Sunday, been a while since we've had one. Largest group of people to ever join FAM Church today, 28 people. 28 people between first service and second service. So honored to have people who want to be a part of this church. Do you know how odd and unusual that is anymore? Do you not know that we live in a culture where no one wants to commit to anything anymore? If you don't know that, you need to hear that. People are ghosting left and right. They are unplugging from any kind of commitment left and right. They don't want to be bothered. Don't call me. Don't, don't look at me. Don't do anything. And so in a culture like that, when we have people who will say, Yeah, I'll, I'll join a church. That's a big deal. It's a huge deal in our culture today. So we're here to celebrate Come on, somebody. All of these wonderful people who are going to be countercultural. Yes, I love it. 30 years ago, if you wanted to be countercultural, you went out every Friday and Saturday night and smoked wacky tobacco and run the roads. Listen, I was countercultural at one I was, you know, I was one of those too for a while. But I, I never thought that it would flip, Adam. Where if you want to be countercultural, be a spirit-filled believer. It's so wild, ain't it? And I love it. And I'm thrilled today that we've got some folks who are wanting to join on this ride with us. So, with that being said, what does it look like, right, to join Fam Church? What's that look like? Because I don't know if you noticed it or not, but we are intentionally different. That's who we are. We recognize that there are hundreds, that's plural, hundreds of churches in Burke County alone. Someone told me one time there were 285 churches in Burke County. I thought, good night. How in the world do you fit 285 churches in Burke County? How's that possible? You know? But then I got, you know, I live off exit 100, about a mile and a half off of exit 100. And there are seven churches from my house to the interstate in a mile and a half. Seven. And so we had a surprise inspection here from the fire department, fire marshal. They're always a blessing when they come around. And they just showed up. I think Matt, you was here that day. And uh, they just showed up unannounced. How rude of them. And, and, they, and, they, and they started walking around. And, of course, they saw all the fire hazards that we had here. We put a table or something like that in front of a door, which is a no-no. You know, just stuff like that. And, you know, real critical stuff, you know. And so, um, but they told us, they said, listen, you got to, we can shut you down right now. I said, Seriously? Or you can get busy getting all these right-of-ways cleaned out. I said, listen, we can get the right-of-ways cleaned out. You know, shutting us down, that sounds extreme, a little extra. But okay, we'll get it handled. So, got Matt, and we all went to work and getting stuff cleaned out of the ways and all that kind of stuff. And while he was here, I talked to him. I said, I've been told, because he was talking about because of COVID, they had gotten way behind in their church inspections. And I said, I had heard uh, through the grapevine that there were 285 churches in Burke County. He looked at me. He said, there's over 285 churches on the eastern side of Burke County. Let that sink in. There are over 285 churches on the eastern side of Burke County. Y'all, there's a lot of churches in Burke County. Like a lot. And we are intentionally different here. We want to be intentionally different here. We don't want, listen, Brigham, I'm the sort of man 
who wants to put my net, son, in deep water. I'm not interested at all in going after what I have termed professional Christians. You say, well, Pastor John, what's a professional Christian? They come in here every week. They hear about Fam Church either through what we export online or whatever, or just through, uh, just through the normal conversations that they have around the water cooler at work or whatever. And they walk in them doors, those French doors back there, and they immediately begin to criticize, judge, pick apart what we do here. They've walked in before, and they see our chairs, and the first question they ask are, where's the pews at? Well, for your information, we've never had pews in this building. We don't want pews in the building. Second question, where's your hymn books at? We don't roll like that either. Third question, why the smoke? You see what I'm saying? So what we have in the American culture is a Christian who has been to so many churches. I I I expected it to get quiet right now. That's fine. What we have now, we've got Christians who have been to so many churches, they know exactly what they like in a church. And they show up with that template in mind, with that filter in mind, and they show up here and they get upset with fam church because we're not trying to go after them. And that we're not trying to uh, do, uh, wrap our service and, and fashion our service after what they want as a consumer. I've got news for you. Our church services are not built around you as a consumer. Our church services are designed and built around what gives glory to God and what is going to reach people who need to be reached. If you're in the house of the Lord this morning and you've been saved and you're filled with the Spirit of God, rejoice. You're going to heaven one day. All ends well. I know it looks kind of weird now, but hang on, son. Your victory in the Lord is coming. But we would be selfish is if as a church, we were not intentional about going out into deep water instead of shallow water. We needed to go out into deep water and put our nets down into deep water and catch those who are a long way from the Lord. And so if we're going to catch people who are a long way from the Lord, we cannot do church as usual. It's what we've decided to be Long ago, some little old lady playing the pipe organ ain't going to cut it no more. Hello, it's different now. Our kids have to have someone who's different. Do you not know that when, they, when we take them to school, as soon as they walk into the classroom, they're given an iPad? And there are churches who think that a felt board's going to work. You're like, what's a felt board? Long ago, there was this board that was real soft. Somewhere, somewhere used to create these cutouts of Jesus and the apostles. They had some weird stuff on the back of them that you could take them and place them against this real soft felt material and they just stuck there by the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and, and that's what you and, and they would give and teachers would give lessons about Jesus and the apostles with felt boards. Listen to me. That day is over. 
We might could bring it back for a nostalgic Sunday every now and again just to show the kids what, you know, what the struggle's like. But the fact of the matter is we have to do church differently. Now look, just because the bells and whistles are different at Fam Church does not mean that the Word of God is different at, felt, at Fam Church. We've almost said felt church. We might have to. Maybe that's another Freudian slip. Matt and Brittany are now brat. And fam church has become felt church. But we've, listen, even though we do things differently here, the word of God stays the same. Amen to that. And so that's what we're going to talk about in our time together today before we bring these wonderful people forward and just bring them into the body officially. What's Fam Church all about? What do we build on? Well, we'll we're built on the Word of God. People want to label us as Pentecostals, and some people want to label us as contemporary, and some people want to label us as charismatic, and some people want to label us. Let people label us whatever they want to label. I'm just a Bible-believing Christian. That's all I am. At the end of the day, I believe in the Word of God. And I believe that the Word of God does not change, that I have to change in my life in order to wrap around it. And so that's what we do here. We read the Bible out loud and we allow it to have the power that it needs over our lives. And so here at Fam Church, if we had to drill down and find a scripture verse that said, yeah, our church is built on that, it's Acts 2. Acts 2 shows us 19 and a half centuries later, how our church is built and what it's built on and what we should strive to be. Not that we've arrived, saints. Hello? Not that we've arrived. But this is what this is the kind of church we strive to be. So in Acts 2 42, it starts off and it says this. They early church, were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, that's one thing, and to fellowship, that's another thing, and to the breaking of bread, that's another thing, and to prayers, and I said prayers with an S because our translators have done us a a disservice, prayers in the original Greek is in the plural. Because early Christians prayed more than once a day. They followed the old Jewish way of praying, which was at least three times a day, unless there was some sort of ceremonial thing going on, and they increased it to five times a day. So you say, does fam church believe in prayer? Are you kidding? It's why this church is still here. Listen to me, saints of God. If we don't have prayer in this church the future of fam church is in jeopardy. How do you think this church, this is the oldest assembly of God church in the state of North Carolina. They're studying it right now, our church. It very well may be the oldest Pentecostal assembly of Pentecostal church south of the Potomac. How in the world Is this church still here after all of these years? How? I'll tell you how. There were men and women who have already gone on to be with the Lord. Whose bodies are in the ground awaiting the resurrection. Those people whom their shoulders that you and I stand upon prayed that this day that you and I are experiencing would happen. That's why we've got what we've got here. And listen to me, saints of God. If we want a church for our children and our grandchildren, we would do well to also pray for that to happen here at Fam Church. Somebody needs to give me a witness in the house of God. Praying 
But let's start back off at the beginning. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching. What is that? Well, I struggle here. I struggle here somewhat as a pastor because I live in the same culture that you live in. And there is unbelievable pressure on me to show up every week and discuss current events. You need to understand that. And I understand that there's a lot going on in our culture. Somebody say amen. There's a lot going on in our culture. And there are two sides in the Christian community who are screaming at churches about what they're supposed to do or what they're not supposed to do. There's a contingency of Christian people who will tell you, no, pastor, you need to get up in front of your people and you need to talk every day about current events and how the Bible relates or does not relate to those current events. And there's a strong push in that. And I do that here. I do not shy away from controversial topics. Y'all know this. I'll go right where I need to go. But then there's another contingency of people in the community of Christ who will say, no, you should never ever bring up things like that. Jesus didn't. And they're right. You go back and you research Jesus' life. Never not once did he bring up any kind of situation like we bring up here in our, in our church today or that other churches bring up. You go look at the Apostle Paul. Same deal. So what are we supposed to do? Do we get quiet, right? Which has probably led to where we are now because no one talks and no one shares and everybody swallows their opinion because they're afraid to be labeled a Christian or a, or, a, or, a, or a homophobe or whatever. And so they keep their mouth shut and they don't say nothing and the culture continuously gets worse and worse and worse. Or do we just get quiet and just sit over here and preach the gospel message of Jesus Christ and never bring up culture, never interact with it and leave it be, let it do what it's going to do, just make sure that as a church that we get just as close to Jesus as we possibly can and that we work on our sanctification down to such a degree that we're just surrounded by people who are just like Jesus and we let the culture go away. And here, this is a rub, this is a real rub. And most leaders in the church are on an absolute tight wire, they're on a razor's edge. What are we to do? I wish I knew. See the trouble that we find ourselves in? Because listen, I'm a Bible man. And the Bible gives me no examples of interacting with culture to the degree that we do. But yet I'm a man who leads people in this culture, Travis. Surely i got to speak to some of the things. Because if I can't take some of the things that are represented in our culture, brother, and show that for what it is, and then show the opposite of the Scriptures, and juxtapose those two positions and say, this is why we don't act like the world, then surely I'm doing you a disservice. So it's, a, it's, it's hard, right Heidi? It's hard because the last thing y'all need is for me to get up here and regurgitate everything you've heard on CNN and Fox News all week. That's going to do you uh, zero good. You watch enough Fox News. You watch enough CNN. You watch enough of Good Morning America. You watch a good, you know, come on. Thought about it this morning. I thought, I think I'm going to take my cell phone on a church, on a, on a sermon, and saw it in half in front of everybody. And just say, look, if you need me anymore, stop by the church or you're welcome to send a passenger pigeon my way. Because I've got to do, listen, we're going into uncharted territory and uncharted waters where we've got to have leaders who know the deal. 
but I give you this promise. Those of you who are joining, those of you who are already here, I'm going to give you a promise. We will follow the apostles' teachings. We will do that. We're going to hang out with one another. Come on. Come on, Jeff. Get with me, son. We're going to hang out with one another. Even the people that we don't like. Brad and I were talking about this the other day. <laughs> it's going to be awful from this day forward. I'm just warning y'all. <laughs> He's in the same situation there and the same situation in youth. They got about 60 youth down there. Hallelujah. That's awesome. And inevitably, when you're you're growing, and and we're growing too as a church, there's, there's, there's no lid for us. We're continuing to move forward. Hallelujah. Thank God. If we're not careful, we'll get too clickish. And I understand you're, you're, you're naturally drawn to people who were like you. Okay? That's just, that's just normal. Okay? For example, I'm not going to hang out with anybody who crochets. That's, Tim, that's not my bag. You know, you find me over in the corner drooling, I'll be out. It's, it doesn't do any, it does not turn my crank at all. I don't get fired up. Maybe some of you men do. I don't. I mean, this culture, you never know. So I may not hang out with the crocheting class, okay? But here's what I can't do, right? Exclude the crocheting class. I can't look down my nose at them, right? We have to find places that we agree, places that we can commit, to hanging out with one another. And maybe it's not during the crocheting class, but maybe at some other time when we can get together and hang out. Because fellowship is the lifeblood of any church. If you don't have community, okay, and listen, the church should be leading the culture in this. The local bar should not be the only place where people can come and hang out. Come on. Hello. Because listen, the bar they'll they, listen they'll 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 pull the stool out right beside them, set you on there, and buy you a beer. That's how much they want community in those places. Misery loves company, and we have to be just as inviting here. You say, well, Pastor John. That means there's a whole lot of people that I may not agree with who are welcomed at Fam Church. Bingo. What did I tell you? We're here to take nets into deep water. And people may not be like what we are as a believer now. Let us don't forget, brothers and sisters, where we started. Let us don't forget where we started. I come into a church, okay, fully expecting to be judged too. And I found community, which is the only reason why I stuck around. And then once we invite them to Jesus, okay, and we bring them to Jesus' feet, Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit and the preaching of the Word of God on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights will change their life. It'll do it. I'm confident that the Word of God can do what it set out to do. And that it will accomplish what it will accomplish. That frees me up, come on, to be as loving as I possibly can be, which is pretty difficult for me because I'm not a very lovey-dovey sort of person. But I can muster up some love and kindness and compassion for my fellow man. So as we try to navigate through this thing, we need to understand that fam church is going to be based on the Bible and is based on the Bible. We need to remember that we need to be praying for our future, for our children, our grandchildren, so that they've got a good Bible-believing church to belong to. 
We've got to continue to make sure that we're hanging out with one another and eating. You see, we go to a food court and we'll sit down to a, to a total stranger. I see Caleb back there. Me and him enjoyed table fellowship this past week. It was a good time, wasn't it, brother? But there were some people, y'all know the type. The restaurant's empty. Where do they sit? Right next to you. It's like, okay, well, we're going to continue to talk about Jesus even though you want to be all up in our business. We're going to still talk about Jesus. But look, that's the culture that we live. You go to the mall, you sit down to strangers and everything. But look, the table fellowship, the breaking of bread between saints, there was more going on there than just pulled pork. There was fellowship and communion in the spirit that was going on there taking place between he and I in the Lord. And that goes on anytime that I have a lunch or a supper with any of y'all. That's what we do. It takes it down. There's something spiritual and holy about sharing a meal with somebody. That's why we've got a meal prepared for those who are joining the church today. We're going to eat with these folks today. Share table fellowship with them today. It's important for us. Come on. So this is the, these are the things that the church is built on. This is fam church. Do we do it perfectly? No, but we strive. We work at it. We think about it. We are intentional about it. And that's the kind of church that was there at the first century. That's the kind of church that's going to be strong when Jesus comes back. Hallelujah. That's the kind of church I want to belong to. And I believe that's the kind of church you want to belong to. With that being said, everybody, and I, I can't remember out of the 28 who was in first and who was in second service. But if you're here this morning and you've gone through the classes and we've talked and shared and fellowshiped with one another, would you make your way up here to the front of the church and let us just love on you this morning? Come on, don't be shy. You're around family now. Y'all get on up and come on here this morning. Amen. Y'all make your way down here to the front and just face your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Y'all know one another. Look, this is what we do now. It's simple. You're like, Pastor John, did you get what you're about to do out of a book? No. I got this from my mama. How many of you remember your mama used to say, before you went into a store, <laughs> she used to turn around and look in the back seat and she'd say, look at me. If you embarrass me in this store, anybody have a mama like I had? If you, <laughs> if you embarrass me in this store, I will wear you out on aisle three. I don't even care. And I used to say, Mama, well, I'll call Child Protective Services. And she'd say, call them. I'll whip them too. <laughs> this is what we do. I have made a commitment to the people who are standing in front of you this morning that y'all won't embarrass them. You understand? We started the sermon off by saying, look, it's a big deal for people to commit to join something. It's a big deal for people to commit to a church. And I've promised them on your behalf that you won't embarrass them. And that, that they'll look back on this day with a source of pride that they joined a great Bible-believing church like this one. And oh, and they're not off the hook either. Because <laughs> I told them, I said, look, you got to make me a promise, okay, that you won't embarrass this church. And they've promised me, okay, and I'm sharing with you this morning that they've promised that they won't embarrass you. 
because that means a lot to y'all. And I promise not to embarrass y'all. And, and In other words, we're going to live godly lives. We're going to pray for one another. We're going to lift one another up. We're going to do life together. And at the end of the day, that's all we can ask. Is that we've got a community, a family of believers who will come alongside of us and help us through this madness that we call the American culture. With that being said, with promises being made, both coming and going, stand to your feet and let's pray over these wonderful folks. Those of you who are on the board, make your way on down here, please. I'm going to have you lay hands on them. Dick, Bob, who are we got? Bruce, uh, everybody, yeah, y'all know who you are. Gary, Robbie, y'all come on down. He's not on the board, but I respect him greatly. David Scalise, come here, please, sir. Where's he at? Here he is. He disappeared on me, them lights. You've committed yourself to FAM Church years ago. Decades, Decades ago. Decades. Pray over these wonderful people as a member of this wonderful body, please. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we humble ourselves this morning that we get to bind ourselves together as one body under the banner of Christ Jesus. Lord, you take us as we are, Lord God. We come to this blessed place, Lord God, that we might become like you. So now, Lord, complete the work that you've started in this church. Complete the work that you've started in each of these individuals that have made this commitment this morning. Lord, have your way that the, that the bride of Jesus Christ might be glorious to bring honor and praise yeah. to your holy name. We ask these things in the glorious and holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, David. Can you welcome them into the body this morning? Well, raise your hands to the heavens and don't go nowhere when I dismiss you. When I dismiss you, don't you do me a favor. Those of you who are joining the church, y'all hang out right here. When I dismiss you, come on down here. Shake a hand. Hug a neck. Welcome these wonderful brothers and sisters into this church this morning. Will you help me out on that? I sure hope that you will. Raise your hands to the heavens. Receive this blessing. It's yours as a child of the King. Now, may the Lord bless you. And may God keep you. And may the Lord make His face to shine upon you. May God be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance on you. And may He give you peace. Receive that today in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you in the Lord. Go and do good.